Iditarod Race, or the last great race on Earth, is an 1,100-mile sled dog race that takes place in Alaska over a three-week period in the beginning of March. This grueling journey for sled dogs and mushers begins in the city of Anchorage, located in the southern region of Alaska. From there, sled dog teams head across the unforgiving wilderness and terrain of Alaska's interior. For the few that complete the race, they arrive at the finish line in Nome, Alaska, located on the western coast of the unrelenting Bering Sea. Throughout the race, mushers and dogs face freezing temperatures, intense storms, and high winds, all contributing to the challenges of completing the race. In fact, more people have climbed Mount Everest than completed the Iditarod race. The history of the Iditarod is traced back to the Serum Run of 1925, when an outbreak of diphtheria ravaged through Nome, Alaska. With an epidemic that had the potential to take the lives of the entire town and surrounding native tribes, 20 mushers and over 150 sled dogs braved negative 60 degree weather and blizzards by relaying the life-saving serum between sled dog teams over 650 miles from Nanana to Nome. In just five and a half days, the serum arrived in Nome behind the pulling strength of Balto, a Siberian Husky and arguably the most famous sled dog ever. In 1973, the Iditarod became Alaska's official sled dog race, honoring the mushers and dogs of the Serum Run by racing on the same trails they traveled. Over the years, rules and requirements for competing in the Iditarod have evolved. To gain entry into the Iditarod race, mushers must complete a series of three smaller sled dog races. Once a musher qualifies, the entrance fee is $4,000 to compete. This fee does not cover the cost of transportation and various expenses for dogs including food, medical care, training equipment, and gear. Because of sponsors and entrance fees, the Iditarod does have a monetary prize pool based on the amount of entries. The total number of sled dog teams varies from year to year, and in the past decade there have been as many as 120 participants and as little as 60. Because of the yearly fluctuation in participants and local and corporate sponsors, prize money also varies. The winner of the race takes home a new truck and or $50,000 or more. The Iditarod, however, is not without its controversies. Animal rights activists suggest that the Iditarod is nothing more than animal cruelty. According to Sled Dog Action Coalition, since 1973, there have been 147 documented dog deaths during the Iditarod race, and records are not kept on dogs that die in training or after the race. During the first race in 1973, it was reported that between 15 and 19 dogs perished throughout the race. McGrath resident Ted Almsby said all you could see along the trail was dead dogs and blood. Dog deaths have plagued the Iditarod since its conception, and the official Iditarod policy regarding reporting dog deaths during the race is to do so when asked. However, this is not always the case. In 1995, mushers Kizu Funatsu and Robert Summers each lost dogs during the race. When the Iditarod veterinarian Karen Schmidt was asked about injuries and death, she initially only reported Funatsu's dog's death, not Summers's. According to the Alaska Daily News, AP reporter Alan Baker asked officials every day regarding dog injuries and deaths, and Baker discovered that Schmidt only reported dogs with the flu and withheld the death of Summers' dog for four days. Some Iditarod enthusiasts argue that sled dogs are born with the natural instincts to run, and with the current Iditarod finish time at eight days, some teams are running on average of 125 miles per day. Veterinary doctors suggest caution should be given to those running their dogs this hard. Dr. Paula Kislik suggests all these dogs are very athletic, but they're being asked to perform extreme and prolonged exercise that is not natural to their organ and muscle functioning. In the most recent Iditarod, the Alaska Daily News reported that four-time Iditarod champion Lance Mackey lost dogs Stiffy and Wyatt at different parts of the race. The necropsy of Stiffy showed no signs of abnormalities, concluding the cause of death as unknown. In the 2013 Iditarod, Alaska Public Radio confirmed that a dog named Dorado was dropped at a checkpoint under the care of race officials. He later died when a snowdrift buried him, causing asphyxiation. His death prompted Iditarod officials to establish new rules regarding dog care at checkpoints. With a staggering amount of verified deaths, Iditarod officials are actively modifying and developing prompt care and policies for both mushers and dogs. Currently, the Iditarod has over 39 checkpoints. During the race, all mushers are required by rule to take one 24-hour break and two 8-hour breaks throughout the entirety of the competition. 
Of the over 1,200 plus dogs that participate in the Iditarod, veterinarians and other medical professionals perform on average over 10,000 checkups throughout the race. The Iditarod currently staffs 35 veterinarians. Each veterinarian must have at least five years of experience and they must have experience working with sled dogs. Rules also indicate that mushers must keep a diary of each dog's health observations during the race. Diaries are required to be presented to veterinarians during evaluations at checkpoints. If a dog is found to be too ill or fatigued to continue at a checkpoint, mushers can leave them under the care of race and medical personnel. Depending on where a checkpoint is located, dogs are either flown or driven to an arranged place for care and are later reconnected with their musher and anchorage. According to the official Iditarod website, other precautions are taken to ensure the safety of dogs, including pre-race drug tests for mushers and dogs, microchipping, pre-race heart ECGs, hay for insulation at checkpoints, 39 total checkpoints stocked with food, volunteers, and other health services. Official rules indicate that if a dog does expire on the trail, every effort will be made to determine the cause of death. Based on all evidence presented, it is the responsibility of the race marshal and judges to determine whether a musher should be disqualified. Automatic disqualification and future penalties will be enforced when signs of cruelty are observed, including heat stress, hyperthermia, and hypothermia. If cause of death is not determined within the required eight-hour investigation, the musher can continue on with the race. In 2007, the Associated Press reported the Iditarod Trail Committee disqualified musher Rami Brooks, a two-time runner-up in the Iditarod. Brooks was disqualified as a result of him repeatedly hitting each of his dogs with a marker stake found on the trail. His actions were observed and reported by spectators. The reach of the Iditarod Trail Committee goes beyond incidences observed during the race. In another incident in 2016, the Associated Press reported the indefinite banning of musher Travis Beals on two different charges of domestic abuse for an altercation with his then-girlfriend. Regardless of these incidents, the Iditarod continues to be the most popular sporting event in Alaska. There are an abundance of safeguards in place to protect sled dogs throughout the race, and there has been a steady decrease in dog deaths since 1973. Despite all the care dogs received, deaths still do occur. So what can mushers, the Iditarod Trail Committee, and organizations do to make this event more safe for dogs, eliminating deaths entirely?